Next, what's actionable here is the uh, uh, R two seven seven six one three. The the bullying. We'll have. We'll invite Deputy Superintendent Andrew Stallings up. Thank you, Chair. Um, and I've also got, have, I also have Corby Eason with me. Do you want to introduce yourself, yeah, Corby? Uh, this is Corby Eason. Uh, oh, let me turn. You have to push the button on your mic. It's ready. It's, okay. It's, there we go. Okay. Uh, my name is Corby Eason. I, I work in the student advocacy service section. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And Corby has also been working directly with our bullying prevention working group and, and others on this rule, uh, as well as the model policy that that group is working on. So I wanted to bring Corby up so that you all um, could get to know him, because he and I have worked on this rule for a number of months now. Yeah. Since the last meeting, um, so let me give you just a, a very brief uh, quick history of what happened with six R277613. Back in February, the board adopted uh, revision 7 of R277613 on final reading, and we filed it with the Office of Administrative Rules. During the public comment period of that um, administrative rules publishing, the access, your, one of your advisory committees, access, as well as um, other stakeholders, including Equality Utah, became aware of the rule and noticed uh, something. They apparently had been unaware of what the actions on the rule during the earlier meetings, and then s reached out to staff, including Corby and others, to provide feedback. And you may remember that they sent um, access, sent you all a letter. Um, recommending some changes as well as Equality Utah. So s board member, or I'm Chair Huntsman, the R277613 was set to take effect on Monday, meaning April 9th, and Chair Huntsman, uh, based on the feedback, asked me to hold off filing an effective date on R277613 so that you could have one last opportunity to review the feedback from Access and others and it also gave us an opportunity to work on some revisions to the, to the rule, which are now included in revision eight, based on their feedback. The short story is that we made an, uh, an, a, an amendment to the definition of federally protected class to be legally correct by eliminating um, gender identity and sexual orientation from that definition, because it, it creates some controversy. And instead listed the, uh, gender identity and sexual orientation separately in the reporting section. However, we did not consider whether we should include gender identity and sexual orientation and naming of other characteristics in the training section. So you may remember that there was a Cliff Roski who made some comments this morning mentioned that their, the main crux of their feedback was that not only should the reporting requirements be amended, but the training, the language about bullying prevention training should also be amended. So the, the two big changes are on lines 219 through 232, which um, we, so we have uh, deleted the terms federally protected group, yeah. federally protected status. Last, last 62 through 72. Yes, federally protected class. So we're in revision eight. So please open revision eight. I apologize. Yep. Revision, yes. Oh, so, there it is. so if you look at revision eight, you'll see that, w so we've done the terms civil rights violations on lines 52 and 53, <laughs> and then federally protected class on lines 62 through 672 have been deleted. And in, in lieu of using those terms, which can be um, difficult to interpret and might require educators and administrators to get an attorney to help them interpret. We have instead, in the body of the training se section and the reporting section, stated that there needs to be training on 
the federal laws that provide protections as well as, and you can see this on lines 228 through 233, um, bullying, cyberbullying, hazing, and retaliation based on the students or employees' actual or perceived characteristics, including race, color, national origin, sex, disability, religion, gender identity, sexual orientation, or other physical or mental attributes or conformance or failure to conform with stereotypes. And I should have read the introductory st statement, but it's the training described in 5A shall include information on various types of aggression and bullying, including, and then that's where you bring in the bullying or retaliation based on those characteristics. Also, in the reporting section, you'll see similar language, which states that for reporting purposes, an LEA needs to report um, the number, and this is, if you look at lines 334 through 343. In lieu of using the term federally protected class, we've stated the number of incidents starting on 334 required to be reported separately under federal law, including Title VI, Title IX, Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act, and Title II of ADA, as well as 340 through 343. The number of incidents includes a student who was bullied, cyberbullied, hazed, retaliated against based on the student's actual perceived characteristics, including and in the, in the same characteristics that were listed before. So those are the changes. <coughs> and at this any, any questions on, on those changes? So the way I'm reading this, it's like I'm even included in here, correct? Mm -hmm. It's all, in, all inclusive. Correct, none of us can be bullied. No which, one, no student. Which is simple for LEAs and that to comprehend that they don't, it's just everyone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. period. Well, it would be easy to say that, but mm -hmm. <laughs> that's basically what this said is a hard way to appease quite a few groups. Um, board, um, Vice Chair Brittany Cummins. I move that we approve. Uh, R277613 revision 8 and direct staff to file R277613 revision 8 with the Office of Administrative Rules in lieu of filing an effective date notice for R277613 revision 7. Thank you. Okay, we have a, a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Any discussion to the motion? Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Voting was unanimous. Thank you. Thank you.